epilogue, not the end of the road. Purple and yellow flowers in bloom as far as the eye can see. The earthly, warm colors of Hokkaido in autumn. There I am, chasing a honeybee. Stop it, Nana. A voice sounding flustered. He grabs hold of me and carries me tightly in his two hands. What if you get stung? Satoru, smiling as he reprimands me. Hey, it's been a while. You look good. I rub my small cheeks against Satoru's arms. All thanks to you. How about you, Nana? I'm good, all thanks to you. Ever since the day he departed on his journey, every time Satoru visits me, it's always in this field. This open expanse with its riot of flowers. But I wonder how many more of these winters I can put up with. You're getting on. Don't say that. Just because you left this world when you were younger than me, don't get carried away. A mellow sun shines, but there is a dis dusting of snow fluttering in the air. Another winter is just around the corner, and I am finally coming to the end of my story. Satoru left behind a list of people he was close to, or who have helped him in one way or another, together with a note requesting that they all be contacted and thanked, which Noriko duly did. I was amazed by how many condolence letters and telegrams flooded in, not just from friends, but from colleagues and former supervisors at work, and even from former school teachers of his. Even people Noriko didn't contact, but who had heard the news, got in touch. Noriko was terribly bu busy dealing with them all. I think it was good for her to be busy so soon after Tatoru passed away. I was worried she would become depressed after his death. She might age a whole decade, Satoru told me when he was in hospital, so if you got to stay by her side, okay? In the end, Noriko aged maybe two or three years, max. I mean, she wasn't that young to begin with, about as old as Momo the cat, I imagine, so a couple of years wasn't going to make much difference. Oops, if Noriko or Momo heard that, I imagine they'd be pretty upset. Satoru knew so many kind and thoughtful people, Nana. As well as sending their condolences, people asked to come and light incense and pray in memory of him. They were all people I knew, and Satoru had left handwritten letters for all of them. On Honsu, the main island, the cherry blossoms were blooming farther and farther northward. They wouldn't start blooming in Hokkaido for a while, though. On the streets of Sapporo, there was even some leftover snow in the southern spots. The weather was dodgy for a few days, but on the day of the funeral, the sun shone. It was as though Satoru was welcoming his guests. There was a quiet affair, with only Noriko and relatives on his mother's side attending. I waited at home while the funeral was taking place. I can't say I'm much interested in the ceremonies human like to conduct. I was in the hospital to see him off, but he's still here, in my heart, so I don't need a ceremony to remember him. Later, several people I hadn't seen for a long time arrived at Noriko's and my apartment. Kosuke and Yosemine, and Sui and Shikako. They all wore black and didn't say much, their lips drawn. Please, come on in. I ordered some sushi. It's fine to have some, now that the period of abstinence is over, and I'll make some soup to go with it, so please wait a moment. Noriko said this cheerfully, but the others were concerned they were causing too much trouble. I'm so sorry you have to do all this, Kosuke said, and all the other guests murmured their agreement, bowing to her. Don't worry about it, I'm delighted to have Satoru's friends over. Do you need some help? Shikako said, standing up, but Noriko waved her offer away. Don't worry, I'm really not comfortable having people in my kitchen. As usual, Noriko didn't mean anything by this, but it made Shikako feel a little awkward. If Satoru had been there, he would have said, I'm sorry, her heart's in the good right place. But Noriko kept her eyes fixed on the chopping board and didn't seem to notice. If she had seen Shikako's reaction, she would no doubt have said something else and dug herself into an even deeper hole. Instead of helping, why don't you play with Nana? Oh, well played, Noriko, to get me in on the act. I went over to Shikako and rubbed the side of my body up against her leg. Hi, Nana. I wish we could have taken you in, she said, reaching down to fondle my tummy. Hmm? Kosuke said. Did Satoru arrange a meeting with Nana for you too? He did, said Chikako and Suji together, both smiling wryly. Our dog and Nana didn't really get on, so it didn't work out. For me, it was my kitten that was the problem, drift from Yosimine. They seemed to break the ice, and they all started telling each other their Nana stories. Nana is surprisingly fussy, 
Kazuka said, an uncalled for remark, if you ask me. Oh, really? And who's the one who quarrels with his wife and gets all weepy about it, eh? It seemed that Kosuke and his wife had adopted their own cat. Kosuke proudly showed a few photos on his phone of a pretty silver mackerel toffee. You and Satoru might have been childhood friends, but there's no need to show off your cat like that. Then Yoshimine pulled out his mobile phone. Me too, he said, passing it around. Me too? Yoshimine? That cat with the silly name, Shatran, had grown up to be a ragged young thing. He was an expert at catching mice now. Perhaps my efforts to train him had paid off? Satoru met him, so I thought I'd show him this photo. Yoshimine got up and went over to the old door in the corner of the room set up in memory of Satoru. If I'd known we were going to be bragging about our pets, I would have brought my photo album, Shikaku said. But since we weren't about to be left behind when it came to animal photos, both of them pulled out their mobile phones to share photos of Momo and Toramaru. We ran a bed and breakfast that welcomes pets, so please stop by sometime. So you said, pulling out some business cards, they all exchanged addresses. You know something, Satoru? After you passed away, the people who miss you all became connected. If you wouldn't mind taking one, too, so you said to Noriko, handing her his business card as she brought in the sushi. Yes, please, give her one, I thought. I'd like to lie down and all a snack on top of that boxy worm to be set again someday. Thanks. I haven't climbed Mount Fuji in ages, and that would be lovely. <laughs> Go right ahead, Noriko. I hold the four back at the sujis on top of that toasty TV. They all sat around the table, eagerly sharing stories about Satoru. What? So Satoru didn't swim in junior hike? Kosuke blinked in surprise. That's right, Yosemite nodded. When he was with me, we were in the gardening club together. Was he that good at swimming? He was in the swimming club all through elementary school. He won a lot of races in big colors. And people had had hopes for him. Did he swim in high school? Suji and Shikaku both shook their heads. He had a lot of friends, but he wasn't in any particular club. Really? He was such a fast swimmer. I wonder why he gave it up. As he gave me some tuna sushi, minus the wasabi, Noriko casually murmured, Must have been because you were no longer with him, Kosuke. Oh, Noriko. What is wrong with you? Your user is so clumsy with words, but occasionally what you say is spot on and cuts right to the quick. Kosuke's face fell. As he was writing those letters, he told me a lot about all of you, about how he and you, Kosuke, ran away from home with the cat, and that he was a little bit worried about you since you and your wife had argued. Come on now, you didn't have to say that. We're fine now, Kosuke hardly explained. He told me how much he enjoyed helping you, Yoshimine, and your grandmother in the fields, and how you always did things at your own pace and ran off in the middle of class to take care of the greenhouse, and how anxious that made him. Yoshimine looked out of the window, as if deep in thought. He also told me how Soji and Shikaku loved animals and were a great couple together, and how happy he was when he got to see you again in college. Kosuke's bottom lip began to tremble, and Shikaku wiped away tears. But why? Soji muttered. Why didn't Satoru tell us he was sick? That's disappointing, just like always, you stammer out things you shouldn't. You really don't understand why? I kind of understand why, Yoshimine said. He wanted to say farewell with everybody still smiling. Bingo! Satoru loved all of you guys, that's why he wanted to take your smiles with him. Simple enough, I think. The letters, Kosuke's voice was whippy, but he smiled all the same. In his letters, he wrote about all kinds of funny things, silly jokes and gags too. I laughed, thinking, this can be his last letter, can't it? They all chuckled. When it was time for them to leave, Noriko drove them to the airport in the silver van. Satoru's silver van had become Noriko's silver van, though no longer the magical vehicle that had shown Satoru and Miso many amazing sights, it still did the job. Okay then, before Noriko got back, I had something to do. Noriko came home after dark, and as uh, she wandered into the living room, she let out a scream. Eek! Nana! You did it again! I removed every single tissue from the box and was sitting quietly in the corner contemplating the result of my actions. You don't use them, so I take them out. Good point, but as you focus on your anger and on tidying up the floor, don't all your sad feelings begin to lift a bit? What a waste! What a complete waste! Noriko muttered as she strutted around picking up the tissues, but then, as if letting out a soft puff of air, she laughed. Several years have passed, 
Por su que Torm que shop into studio specializing in pet photos, there was thanks to Satoru's advice, he told us, so I was welcome many time for a free photo session. But the new year guards that arrive have begun to fit to bizarre photos of his dressed up mucker of Toby, who always looks so soon, so I'll take a rain check. Now and again, Yosemite sends such as vegetables he's grown. I'm sure Hokkaido has good vegetables too, he writes in the sore note he always includes in his vegetable box. It's more than Noriko could eat by herself, so she's kept busy running around, sharing them all out with her friends and acquaintances. Noriko did take me once to stay at the Suji's B&B. The purpose, though, was for her to climb Mount Fuji while the Suji's took care of me. While she was gone, I enjoyed the warmth of that boxy to be underneath my belly to my heart's content. Momo had become a refined old lady cat, and Nervi Toramaru had transformed into quite the sensible pooch. Sorry about back then, he apologized. I almost forgot, the Suji's have a child now, a precocious little girl who greeted Noriko with a Welcome, Grandma, which made her blush. The breeze on the mountain ass along the streets are bright red again this year, and pretty soon there will be a constant layer of snow on the ground. How many times, I wonder, have I seen this red that Satoru taught me? One day, Noriko brought home a very unexpected guest. What should I do, Nana? A siren-like wail was coming from the cardboard box. She was scurrying. Inside was a calico, Kiza. Not an almost calico, but a genuine one. And because it was a pure calico, it was of course a female. Someone abandoned it under the apartment building. I thought, since you're already here, Nana, I sniffed at the wailing siren and gently gave it a lick under its chin. Welcome. You're the next cat, aren't you? We're just back from the bed. Nana, do you think you two will get on? Save that for later. Right now, you've got to get some milk into its tummy. The little girl seems hungry. I got into the box and snuggled close to the little creature to warm it up, and she promptly tried to find some nipples on me. Sorry, sweetheart, no milk to be had here. Oh, she's hungry, isn't she? I put some milk for her, let me warm it up. And so, Noriko plunged into a life in which this demanding young kitten has her wrapped around her little finger every single day. Purple and yellow like a flood, the field I saw on our last journey, bursting all the way to the horizon with flowers. When I dream about these colors, Satoru always appears. Hey Nana, how have you been? Aren't you a little worn out? I suppose so. Mama the Sujis left us a few years ago. I may not last as long as she did, and we have a new cat that's arrived to take over. Isn't Noriko doing okay? Having that kitten seems to have put a spring in her step. Noriko named the kitten Calico after her looks. When it comes to giving the most obvious secondary names, you and Noriko are like two peas in a pot, I must say. Really? It's hard to think that she'd take in a stray cat. Satoru seems genuinely moved. Surprisingly, she has the makings of a cat fanatic. Whenever she gets juicy, she always gives me the Toro, the best part of the tuna. Even I might have trouble handing over the Toro, Satoru says, laughing. This is the first cat of her own she's ever had. That's right. We live together, but I'm not Noriko's cat. Forever and ever I am your cat, Satoru. That's why I can become Noriko's. So, about time, maybe, for you to come over here? Yeah, but I have one more thing I need to do first. Satoru looks puzzled. Ahem, <laughs> I say, and twitch my whiskers. I have to help little Kaliko get on her feet. Noriko isn't training her at all. If she becomes too spoiled and never tries to make it on her own on the streets, she'll be toast. At the very least, I've got to hammer the basics of hunting onto her. To be fair, when you grab her by the scruff of the neck, her legs do immediately contract, so she clearly has potential, much more than, say, Shatran at Yoshimines. Once Calico can make it on her own, I think I'll set off on my journey, to this place I see only in dreams. Tell me, Satoru. What's out there beyond this field? A lot of wonderful things, I'm thinking. I wonder if I'll be able to go on a trip with you again. Satoru grins and picks me up so I can see the far off horizon from his eye level. Ah, we saw so many things, didn't we? My story will be over soon, but it's not something to be sad about. As we count up the memories from one journey, we head off on another, remembering those who went ahead, remembering those who will follow after, and someday, We'll meet all those people again, out beyond the horizon. Well, well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. With this, uh, we finished the book, started talking. 
It's the second time I get emotional with this since I have a cut myself. It's like she's even lying on me now, and most of the times when I record actually. So I won't go deep into it. <laughs> like I always say that, don't I? This book does not tell the story I'm so used to, but I found it nice and funny at some parts, especially when it was Nana talking. And I might have lost some voices along the way, but it's not so noticeable if you don't listen to all the book episodes in a short time, is it? The message seems to be that being a good person always pays off, but Satoru died from cancer, didn't he? So that's kind of ironic. Still, it's a good example of how to behave with the people around and also to learn to appreciate the people before it's too late. Now, I'm pretty excited about the arc of the size from Neil Sosterman and I'm getting to work on it as soon as I upload this. But before that, I wanted to say four things. Like, first, I know the episodes got messy and mixed with Narnia, so I have to tell you that I upload the episodes on YouTube from time to time and put them in playlists so it's easier to follow. It's the same name than here, Audiobooks is SVM, which, in case anyone wondered, are just my name, my initials. Second, I thought about streaming on Twitch, something I did before, whether a puzzle game like The Talos Principle or one I've been playing lately with a great Greek, Greek mytho mythology story oriented called Hades. Uh, for those interested in games, it's something nice, and for those who not, you can just uh, like pay a visit and make some questions about the books if you want, or just do both things. I'll stream next Friday 9th at 5pm Spanish time on Murcaster on Twitch. I'll write it on the episode description, don't worry. Uh, saying it with a week of advance, because not everyone listens to the episodes daily. And... Third, related to this, I encourage everyone to follow on Instagram and s or send me mails with feedbacks, since I will do polls with my options to, to have an idea about what series you do want me to bring next time, and which is also better to know about things that come up, like the stream thing this time, without having to listen to all the books, which I know some people won't do, because yeah, everyone has the likings. I'll upload this as an independent episode so everyone can see it, even the people who is not listening to uh, the Traveling Cat Chronicles. And lastly, before I leave, we are almost 200 in the podcast, and I didn't do much advertising of it around my with my friends and those. So I even saw it was uh, the most listened to for some people on their rap for podcasters that I didn't know it existed. So for that, I want to thank everyone, and I'll keep uh, doing my best while trying to improve and bringing, bringing more books as long as I'm allowed to. So, see you around!